Hello and welcome back to this course. In this session, we'll be going to discuss about GPIO. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about the tools offered by ST, that is STM32 Cube MX and Cube IDE. Now let's start with the peripheral section. First peripheral is GPIO. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. As the name suggests, this pin can be used for input as well as output. So let's discuss the features of GPIO one by one. The very first feature is output state. We have two output state push pull or open drain with pull up pull down configuration. Push pull is whether we can push the pin to high logic or we can pull the pin to low logic. Whereas open drain is only accessible for high logic. Next feature is output data from output data register or peripheral. We can send data output using the register as well as peripheral. Input state. Input state can be floating, pull up, pull down or analog. If we configure a pin as an input and it can be in the floating state, that means there will be no a particular state. Pull up, pull down that we can send the logic high or low for the default state. And the third one is analog. That means we can read the value from this pin. Input data to input data register or peripheral. We can send data to input data register as well as peripheral. Next feature is analog function and speed selection for each input and output pin. We can configure each pin as analog function. We can select a variety of speed for each input output pins. Highly flexible pin multiplexing allow the user of input output pins as GPIO or as one of several peripheral functions. Now in this MCO or in any MCO of ARM Cortex, all the pins are multiplexed. That means they can be used for various applications application fast toggle capable of changing every two clock cycle so as already discussed in the features with speed selection if we select the highest speed of the gpio then the toggling speed can be as fast as changing every two clock cycle next is bit set and reset register for bitwise write access to output data register that means there is a particular register bit set and reset register that we can access and write a particular data to that register to access bitwise. Next is locking mechanism provided to freeze the input output port configuration. GPIO offers a lock register so that we can freeze the input output configuration during the initialization. Alternate function selection register. As I already said that the pins are multiplexed to perform variety of application. So a single pin can have an alternate function selection that can be done using the AFR register. So let's get to know the register used in GPIO. Although we will not be directly accessing those registers, but we should be familiar. GPIO register. GPIO port has four 32-bit configuration register. Very first is GPIO mode register. This register will allow the selecting of mode, whether it is input, output, or for the alternate function. Next is GPIO output type register that is selecting the output type whether it is push pull or open drain. Next is output speed register that is that is the speed of particular input output pin and at last pull up pull down register that is we can configure the pull up and pull down for a particular pin. So these four register are used to configure a GPIO. Next is input data register. This register will hold the input data respective to the GPIO pin. Similarly, if we want to send any output data to the pin, we can write with output data register. Next is a 32-bit set or reset register. This register is used to send high logic or low logic depending upon the requirement. All GPIO have a 32-bit locking register. As we have seen in the feature of locking or freezing the input output configuration. So this register is used to lock the configuration of GPIO. And we have two 32 bit register. One is high, other one is low. And at last, all input output pins are shared in six port. That is GPIO port A, B, C, D, E, F. So this is the tabular data represented for the same configuration using the main three register that is mode register, output tab register and pull up pull down register. The mode register is of two bits and this correspond to a single pin. So a single pin can act as four different mode. If we have configured the mode as 0 1 then that particular pin will be configured as output. If we have configured the mode for that particular pin 1 0 then it will act as alternate function. If the mode is configured as 0 0 then the pin will be configured as input and if it is 1 1 then it will be configured as analog mode. So there are four different modes of GPIO. Now comes to output type. As we have seen there is two types of output that is push pull or open drain. So if it is 0 then it is configured as 
push pull and if it is one then it is configured as open tray now comes to pull up and pull down this also contain two bits for a single pin if both the bits are 0 0 then there is no any pull up and pull down configuration if it is 0 1 then there is pull up configuration if it is 1 0 then pull down configuration and for 1 1 there is no any state defined same thing can be seen here with a diagram this is the input output pin this is the bit set reset register so we can connect it to the output control and depending upon the configuration of these MOSFETs, the configuration of GPIO is controlled. So this is for output and the upper one is for input where analog as well as alternate functions are configured. Now the special consideration for input output configuration. The very first is using the HSE or LSE oscillator pins as GPIO. We'll see in the hands-on section that if we enable a clock, there will be pins assigned for oscillator so if you want to use those particular pin for gpio then hse lse oscillator will be switched off and the related oscillator pins can be used as normal gpio so this is very basic that if we want to use the pins for a gpio then we have to switch off the oscillator now when the hse or lse oscillator is switched on then the normal gpio configuration will be not valid next the configuration when the oscillator is configured as user external clock mode this means then when oscillator later is configured in external clock mode then only the pin is reserved for clock input and the oscillator output pin can still be used as normal GPIO. Next is using the GPIO pin in the RTC supply domain like PC13, PC14, PC15 GPIO functionality is lost when the core supply domain is powered off like when the device enters standby mode this pin functionality is completely lost. In this case if there is GPIO configuration and RTC configuration, RTC configuration is not bypassed then these pin are set in analog input mode and at last is using PH3 as GPIO this particular pin PH3 can be used as a boot pin or as a GPIO depending on the software boot 0 bit in the user option byte so these bytes are related in the Q programmer section so if we get a chance we will look for the option byte and see this configuration like if the boot 0 is equal to 1 then option byte will be in the loading phase state and if it is 0 then it will be in reset state so there are multiple number of alternate function and using a multiplexer only one function at a time can be active so input output pins are connected to onboard peripheral or modules through a multiplexer that allow only one peripherals of alternate function connected to an input output pin at a time like if a peripheral is sharing the same pin then there is no any conflict between the only one of the alternate function can be active at each input output pin has a multiplexer with 16 alternate function so af0 to af15 that can be configured through the gpio alternate function register which is pin 0 to 7 and in the alternate function high register pin 8 to 50 so this is the normal configuration for alternate features corresponding to a particular GPIO so that's all for the GPIO session in the next session we'll start with the hands-on session for LED blinking